If your idea of a good time involves grid-based, tactical warfare with a bunch of likeable teens that you can hang out with in your spare time, then your tastes are both incredibly specific and catered to by Fire Emblem Three Houses. The latest in the tactical RPG series and first new Fire Emblem to hit home consoles in over a decade serves as a solid entry for fans, thanks to expanded social elements and newcomers alike, though the latter should probably be prepared for a pretty slow burn. Fire Emblem Three Houses is set on the continent of Fodlin, which is divided into three rival nations, the Adrestian Empire, the Holy Kingdom of Fargus, and the Lyster Alliance, and casts players as an independent mercenary turned professor at the continent's central monastery, controlled by the continent-spanning Church of Seros. At this officer's academy, players are given the choice to teach and lead one of the three houses that represent each of the nations, as threats to the church begin to flare up with increasing regularity and severity. Perhaps the most surprising part of Fire Emblem Three Houses, for me at least, was how utterly engrossing its story is. As a franchise, I'm often turned off by Fire Emblem's use of typical JRPG cliches and tropes, and although Three Houses doesn't avoid these entirely, I found the greater focus it gives to the various nations and how they affect and interact with one another much more compelling. It helps that the game's cast of characters act as a window into their respective homelands, on top of just being fun to talk to and having interesting backstories in their own right. And having the option to follow any one of the available houses' storylines gives Fire Emblem Three Houses an opportunity to explore its more prominent characters through different perspectives, which I think makes each of them just a bit more engaging, in addition to giving you plenty of inherent replay value. It doesn't hurt that the gameplay itself is pretty satisfying to pick up and play for short periods either, thanks to the fast and simple turn-based battle system, as well as the regular offerings of battles that aren't necessarily plot relevant, so perfect for the Nintendo Switch. As with previous entries in the series, players take control of units on a top-down grid, maneuvering them into position with allies and enemies before triggering battles, the effectiveness of which is generally determined by the classes and stats of the units involved. These battles are fun enough, though I'd be lying if I said they weren't a little on the easy side, especially on normal difficulty. After finishing the game once and jumping into New Game Plus on hard, I'm still struggling to feel any significant difference in difficulty, though my initial playthrough didn't start to get challenging until around the 30 hour mark, so I can't properly speak to hard mode's offerings. I will say that once the game does start introducing more features to each battlefield, such as extensive fog, or traps, or flaming territory, then positioning and advancing your forces can become a little trickier, but even then, Fire Emblem Three Houses never feels super demanding. Even when playing on classic mode where characters can permanently die, the challenge is diminished by the presence of the time-rewinding Divine Pulse. I won't lie though, having a limited number of rewinds on hand is useful for when you accidentally push a button and lock a unit into something that you didn't mean to do. On the subject of unit management, Fire Emblem Three Houses does offer a fairly robust class system to upgrade your various characters, and the way it handles class-specific abilities, by allowing you to mix and match them regardless of your current class once they're unlocked, can let you build some pretty fun and occasionally broken units. While the system does lend itself to some pretty extensive min-maxing, if you're into that kind of thing, it never felt like I had irreparably ruined a character by putting them into an unusual class, and Three Houses' social elements make fixing any potential mistakes a relative breeze. As a professor for the Officers Academy, it's your job to teach the students of your chosen house, as well as lead them into battle. For those moments between skirmishes, you're tasked with a set amount of lecture time and leisure time to interact with and educate the various students, and even some of the other teachers. And if I'm being honest, I think these sections were the most enjoyable part of the entire game. Social elements have always been a part of the Fire Emblem franchise and are generally used to improve interactions between units on the battlefield, often by having adjacent units protect or attack with allies during battles, as well as unlocking extra story interactions between characters, but I don't believe they've ever been as extensive or as accessible as they are in Three Houses. The game takes a much more Persona-esque approach to making friends, giving players a small hub world to explore, as well as some time management activities that allow you to boost support levels, as well as individual character traits, far quicker than simply positioning them next to an ally in battle. The actual teaching aspect of your role as a professor isn't particularly extensive, but it does allow for some out-of-battle skill improvements which help with any aforementioned class-choosing mistakes that you may have made. You're also able to increase your own character's skills through individual training with certain characters, and reaching skill thresholds or ranking up support levels with students outside of your house can even open up recruitment opportunities for them. You're even able to garden or fish in your spare time, and all of it contributes to your ability as a professor, which increases the number of activities you're able to perform in your free time, as well as how many students you can individually teach during lessons. 
Now, having all of this extra stuff piled on top of the game's battles does slow its pacing down a lot, and if the world building that comes from interacting with the students of your respective houses isn't doing much for you, then the game risks having you call it quits before the plot really kicks into gear, which is about two thirds of the way through. There are a handful of mysteries that continue to rear their heads in the first two thirds of the game, which might be enough to keep players hooked, but I'd be lying if I said that the final six chapters weren't the most interesting part of the game, at least for my initial playthrough. It was so interesting that I almost immediately began a New Game Plus save, something I hadn't initially considered doing until after the Three Houses final chapters blew me away. And like I said earlier, there's plenty of inherent replay value to be had with Fire Emblem Three Houses, what with four main story paths and over 30 unique characters to get to know and level up. It also helps that the game is fairly easy on the eyes. Its anime-inspired art style isn't overly exciting, but it's nice enough and accommodates a good variety of character designs among the students and other characters you'll encounter along your journey. The voice work for said cast as a whole is fine, though there aren't a ton of standout performances, and I was particularly surprised by Three Houses' diverse soundtrack more than anything. It features soothing tracks for hanging out at the monastery and also the odd dubstep bass drop in the middle of battle, so there's that and it'd be remiss of me not to mention the game's various reward jingles and critical hit effects. Fire Emblem Three Houses does a great job of making you feel like you've done a great job. So with all that said, Fire Emblem Three Houses is excellent. Admittedly, its main plot does take way too long to really kick in, but if you're like me, then Fire Emblem Three Houses will already have you hooked with its interesting characters, fleshed out world, and its enjoyable battling and social systems. Whether you're a newcomer to the franchise or a longtime fan, you should definitely give Three Houses a look. It's good value for money, if nothing else, with my relatively short first playthrough clocking in at over 40 hours, easily. 